think it's obvious that we're trying to camp on the ocean. I don't even know how legal this is. You smell that, Tommy? Salty. Salty. Very salty. Almost like my subscribers after I bought three boats and never fixed any of them. That is coming to an end today, folks. I just got tired of it. I said, I, I'm not gonna be able to fix this outboard and get it the way I want it. So I dropped it off with the guy who's starting a new business. Local business, his son's coming back from Hawaii. He's been stationed out there. A little father-son action. Touched my heart. As most of you know, I bought this Facebook Marketplace pontoon for four grand. Plywood, a leaking pontoon, and a non-functional motor. Decent trailer though what I told my wife. I recently got fed up with this boat, dropped it off, new throttle cables, new steering cables, and my favorite part, he went ahead and slapped on a new little throttle box, as I like to call it. He kept calling it a binnacle or something. Don't know if he knew what he was talking about. He ended up finally securing the center console to the boat and, and, They're jealous. One thing that I've always wanted to do is camp on the ocean. Ever since I was a little kid, I thought it would be one of the most epic things to go out on the ocean, fish all night, try to catch some salty eaters, maybe some trout, reds, who knows? A lot of this depends on hopefully the Evan Rood actually runs today. I might have been hiding that the Evan Rood doesn't work by fishing ponds that only allow trolling motors, just so you guys would stop judging me all the time. Today's the day though, fingers crossed. She runs. Oh. Young kids and their music, am I right? Jeez, dude. The barge is in. I'll be back, Tommy. Don't go anywhere. I don't know where I'm gonna go. A little choppy, eh? A little choppy. Can't wait to sleep in this. Turn! <laughs> Tommy, don't you take breaks right now. No sitting down. <laughs> Come on. You better brace yourself, Tommy. You better brace yourself. Look at her go, dude. She's just cold. She hasn't been running like eight years. <laughs> I'm so happy. Dude, I feel so happy right now. We we'll probably burned half our tank already though. Let's see what all she's got. Be careful up there, man. Be really careful. We're taking a little water on the front. So I was looking at Google Maps because we have no charting on this boat right now. I think we have a massive sandbar to our right and then a massive channel going underneath the bridge. God, we're absolute rollers, freaking A. Why would just going through the ocean? Oh, <laughs> I think you're fine. Okay, I I'm, glad, I'm glad you feel safe, Tommy. The girthy girl is very sensitive. I heard salt water really helps preserve plywood, so. This feels so good. We actually have a boat that works. In your face, mom. Oh, big one, wow. That went underwater a little bit. I think we're gonna have a little bit of wind cover in that side of the bay. Woo! It's a lot of wave, buddy. I don't know. I'm kind of scared right now. It ain't getting better. She's doing great. I think she really just needed a little time. Lord! 
The girthy girl is a speed demon. Tommy, you better be careful up there. I'll send you back to Chicago if you start taking health contradicting moves. The front seems to be dipping a little lower. I'm not calling you fat or anything, but golly, son. We're gonna stay in the bay for most of today's video. Open water was a little bit more choppy than I anticipated. The one thing I definitely wanna improve on the boat, we have a five gallon, maybe an eight gallon gas tank. That does not last an old outboard very long. Now that we know the boat works, the objective for the next 24 hours is not only to live, survive, and float in the ocean, but to catch and properly release the biggest possible shark that we can hook into. With that said, we do not have any bait. We don't even have tiny bait to catch bait fish. So we gotta start from cast net and work our way up to bait, then to Big Daddy. We have 24 hours, me and Tommy. We need to survive, not sink, and try to catch the biggest shark we can. Tommy, have you ever thrown a cast nut? I'm not. I've done this a few few weeks out of the year, every year growing up. What I have learned in the few weeks being down here, pinfish are some of my favorite baits to throw. The number one way to get pinfish into the bucket, cast nut, grass patch. Cut that, cut that pancakes. Problem is we're floating in a forge right now. So far, we're coming up empty. We need to adjust probably where we're, oh dude. Dang it, I choked. No, I got him. Yes. That is what we needed. I saw a group of mullet come flashing across. Ow! That's what I love about salt water. Everything and anything will just stab you at any moment. We now have a decision to make. We can keep trying to catch bait, potentially catch a ladyfish, or take that mound of mullet we got, set up deep, see if any big sharks are out before dark. Probably gonna let that barge do its thing first. We are gonna go ahead, get some short rigs as far out as we can before it gets dark. This boat is kind of tough to see. It's almost flat with the water, so. Be really easy for a drunk guy not to see us and just. Mm. I'm gonna add a couple egg weights to the shark rig. We're gonna try to have them sit pretty deep and stay deep. We could not have asked for a better night to do a camping video. As soon as I said we had good weather, the wind starts picking up. Yeah, girl, let me feel it. Also, if you hear that 50 cow in the background, we're near, near a military base. Apparently they practice shooting 50 cows in neighborhoods once a night. I'm for it though, I love America. Whoa, dang. Super pumped, I got my phone in my pocket. All right, we are rigged. It's a lot better than eight times, eh? The objective is to do somewhat of an incomplete fillet. So it gives a little bit of movement to the fish, almost makes it look alive, but it also releases the, the stank, that smell that brings those sharks in from miles away. Bait number one, 618 fishing would be proud. Actually threw the weight right there. The fish went really far, but the weight Supposedly they've seen some eight foot sharks swim through here feeding on the docks at night. So even if we don't catch fish on this first go round, there's potential for all night. 
We probably got an hour left of daylight. We're gonna try to anchor up across the bay. Let's see what happens. Okay. I feel like we could drop them right here, don't you? I honestly think you drop them, yeah. Okay. Mind grabbing the wheel? Any time would be great, Tommy. Currently cruising in, trying to figure out a place to anchor up. We got lines out. We're gonna let out about 200 yards of line. Try to get out of the main cut. Try to find some sharkies. I don't know how deep we are. I think I can see the bottom. It might just be a slow drag. I don't know about a true anchor. All right, rods are set. No shot. Are we drifting? Not a lot. I want to feel him again. I want to make sure he has it in his mouth. That is a large bait. Feel anything? Nothing. Didn't have it. I can't tell if we're drifting. There is a pretty good breeze. It just really looks like one's hitting that one on the left side. That sucks. Before we go any further, today's video is brought to you by Anchor. The new Anchor 757 will last up to 3,000 complete charges, which is six times longer than other industry competitors. My good friends over at Anchor also care for their customers. They're gonna be giving you five years warranty on this bad boy. I'll do a medium so we can share. Not to nerd out on you people at home, but this 757 has hyperflash recharge, which uses bi-directional inverter technology, so you have a 92% charging conversion rate. Real men use caramel macchiato. Basically, that means you can recharge a battery from zero to 80% less than an hour. That's quick. Also, the 757 has a 1500 watt output power, which means it can basically power any small home appliance, microwaves, coffee makers. You wanna burn your mouth or your popcorn, Anchor's gotcha. They also have smaller models like the 521 and the 535, which I've told you guys about before. So if you guys would like to check out any of Anchor's products, particularly the new 757, make sure to click on the link in the description. See you back on the ocean. We attempted to anchor up, but as you can tell we have a little bit of a breeze some wind coming in as soon as i said it was the perfect night the wind just starts ripping it's a good drift though it might not be a bad thing we've been waiting two hours i think we're gonna pull in try another location can't tell if i'm hitting the bottom or if we got something tiny pecking Ugh. Just reeling in the bait. Imagine reeling in a six foot shark 300 yards. Such a rewarding feeling though when you catch a fish that big. Ah. Is that a catfish? Bro. <laughs> These are sail cats. Those fins are like eight inches long. I'm not getting close to that thing. We come down to Florida, throw out entire mullet. Catch a catfish. That rod's moving too, so if I had to guess, we're probably double catted up. I will take it though. We have struggled with our Florida fishing. Not my favorite fish to catch in Florida. Honestly, my least favorite fish. That's why I'm not that excited right now. I'm also terrified of this guy. I'd rather catch an eight foot shark. Those barbs can go through your entire foot. This is why I always promote wearing closed toe crocs. Dude, there's so much fish slime on the deck. One of us is going over because of this slimy guy right here. 
You will not be missed. We did catch a saltwater fish. Not a bad thing. At least we didn't reel up empty hooks. Tommy. Even bigger. Love it. All right, we're getting him off the hook. I might save him for cut bait. About to shoot across the bay. Hopefully some deeper water. Try to find some sharks. This video has unintentionally taken a turn to an actual food chain fishing challenge. We cast netted the mullet thinking that we had shark bait. Then we caught these pretty nice sized saltwater catfish. Bah! Can we get a hook through this? Now, as you can see what I've done with this fish, I filleted from the tail up to the rib cage right before the gills. So it looks like a skin flap. When it's sitting on the bottom, the current's gonna take that flap and just flap all that blood and bodily fluids, oil, nasty catfish. Goo. Hopefully every shark in the bay can smell it. Come swimming in quick. Mm. I'm just gonna ease her into the water. Don't worry. Come off the hook. Golly, dude. See it just floating down there. So eerie. An hour ago, it was ripping. Now it's completely still. There's a little breeze. Almost too quiet. It's like a scary movie. I don't know why I'm nervous. We're completely safe on the girthy girl. Might have just got a little mullet poop on our blanket, Tommy. Well, while the rigs are soaking, we have MREs, propane, and I got Tommy a cute little tea kettle. He's kind of into like tea parties and stuff. He does it, you know, when he's not filming for me. A lot of people sleep on MREs. These are some of my favorite meals, camping meals of all time. One and two thirds cups, boiling water. How many times are you boiling water in a tea kettle, cooking MREs and shark fishing with a Chicagoan man? I love this boat. The one thing I would love to do with the Girthy Girl is turn it into the ultimate camping boat. I was watching Mav, I don't know if you guys have seen him camp in his truck or not, but I would love to have some organization on the Girthy Girl. Have something where we had all of our camping utensils, everything together. We might be doing a little remodeling video soon. Looks like a normal plate of chicken teriyaki, fried rice. They're so good, man. I also just had a poop sack explode on me in this hand that I'm eating off of, so. Tell me you want to try? Yeah. <laughs> wow. I'm actually uh, shocked right now. You like it? Yeah, it's really good. The flavor's really good. She's good. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Oh, Tommy. Slow it down. <laughs> would recommend utensils. I think that's the number one thing we missed. Every single time we go camping, we're like, dude, all right, let's bring this. And we bring it and then we forget the thing that we already had. And the one thing I've learned with camping is you never have it all together. It takes years of just missing, not having, forgetting. I don't even know if I'll ever get it right, but we have enough to get the job done. We got a mullet, an entire catfish, and some happy tummies now. Am I right? Oh, you're right. I'm gonna finish my dinner. Fingers crossed we catch a big one.
it's two o'clock. No sign of life for the past couple hours. We saw some dolphins come through. Not a good sight if you're a shark fisherman. Didn't go our way, but you know, sometimes that's the way fishing is. We went ahead and beached the pontoon. We decided it'd be a safer bet. We're gonna wake up first thing in the morning. I got a trick up my sleeve that could potentially yield a shark. Fingers crossed. See you guys in the AM. Let's see how many tries she takes off the rip. Oh, she's close. Six, nine. I think that was 18, but it's better than not. That got me. Okay. She just was a little shy in the morning. That's not a big deal. Sometimes it just takes her a minute. I'm a little groggy sometimes too. Hit that snooze button a few times. When we started this video, we came to this base seeking refuge. I'm thinking we came to the place where catfish seek refuge as well. Not a lot of sharks. We're pushing back out to the open water. We're gonna fish this big bridge. I'm hoping it's really deep. Need to grab some bait, tie up. See if we can't end this video with a bang. Find some bait. Damn. Quit filming me, Tommy. I'm sick of this. Why can't I throw him, dude? I don't think I'm putting enough hip into her. It wasn't good. Quit nodding your head. I mean, she's empty. He is my soul. I don't think live bait's gonna happen for us. Good news is we had some other stuff up our sleeves. Our absolute last resort. Ah. Something I've never done before. We bought some chum from Walmart. Oh, she is potent. Oh my lord, dude. Oh, it's all over me. I don't know how good this stuff works, how long it'll work for, but we're getting desperate. Apparently there's a mixture of frozen shrimp, fish, every kind of bait you can possibly imagine. Not for human consumption. Head on shrimp, headless shrimp, mullet, squid, cut squid, cut bait, crab bait, sand fleas, shucked clams, cigar minnow, Spanish sardines, chum. Fun stuff. We're gonna throw one last long bomb. Try to throw it deep. We wanna end this video with a bang. We drove four hours. We gotta drive four hours today. We got two hours of sleep last night. We need to hook into a girthy, fat, salty Sally. Send the girthy girl out with a shebang. About to take this boat out of the water, run across the island. There's a $2 entry fee to fish off the pier. We're gonna go out there. We have 60 minutes. Fingers crossed, we catch a big one. See you there. We didn't catch anything. We went out on the pier and there was a ton of families and people trying to catch fish for dinner, lunch. I felt terrible. They'd been there since 5.30. I heard some guy saying he just started catching fish. Then if I reeled in an eight foot shard, with ease, like not difficult at all. Just boat flipped it on the pier, cause I could. I didn't want them to miss out on their food. We're gonna come back to Florida and give this another shot. We came up short, we tried. Didn't even catch a single Salty Sally besides some catfish. Guess the catfish just love us, it's who we are. Can't get away from them. Girthy girl, she's running. Might take 20. Sometimes that's life. I'll see you on the next one. I love you. Peace. Oh, Tommy.
me and Tommy have come down to Mexico. It's not where we are. Sink any book. Sorry, buddy. Not known for my grace. Try to make sure you get my thighs in these shots as much as you can. Fingers. 